Hey guys, gotta do a quick demo here of my uh, my ham station. Let you guys uh, see uh, see uh, how I got my things set up. I've been a ham for uh, gosh since the uh, maybe 1983 or 84. Um, before that, I was in a CB since '75, so I've been on radio for quite a while, and uh, I've I've had all different equipment. I never really had uh, real nice equipment like this until I um, <laughs> and still until I got a really good job. But uh, but I wanted to show a couple things that I found um, works out really really well. So if you guys are are um, you know looking to expand your ham shack or whatever, I'll show you what works for me. You know, maybe it won't work for you, but this is what I found to be a pretty good setup here. First of all, I'm going to show you the radio. This is the ICOM 7600. A little bit more than uh, what I was originally planning on getting, but uh, I really liked having the scope feature. And uh, some of the other functions on this radio makes uh, operating a breeze, uh, especially the, uh, the notch filters on it. Um, being able to uh, notch out uh, stations that uh, come in close to you for contesting or whatever it is just really nice I, I i make them just about go completely away with the filtering on this also um this right here is a, a really good investment this right here is a clear speech dsp uh, by west mountain radio uh, this thing right here um cuts out a lot of that background static now if you look at my rig i've got the i've got the uh, rf gain cut back a little bit which you, sh you should anyway to cut back some of the static but I want you to hear something here that's with the DSP right and let me turn it off uh, Roger Roger John KT5 CUK N4 ZEW 73's and have a great evening ok I'm going to turn it off So without it, that, CQ20, CQ20, CQ20 meters from yeah. November 4, Zulu Echo Whiskey and 4 ZEW calling CQ20 and listen. I mean, maybe that doesn't make much difference, but after a while, it, that listener fatigue really can take a toll. Uh, anyway, so here's some of the other stuff. I got a, uh, down at the bottom here, I got a, I got a, I got a, a switch box. This lets me switch from my desk mic, which is a really good mic. It's an SM50 desk mic, uh, or I can run my inexpensive headset. Uh, it's a Yamaha headset that'll run with these icons, um, and I can just hit this switch box right here from mic A to mic mic B, and it lets me uh, toggle the you know which microphone I'm going to use. I also can switch radio A, radio B. Uh, and use these two microphones for the other radio, which is the 9100. So I can actually um, listen to six meters and two meters, and uh, be operating HF at the same time. It's, uh, it's a pretty cool setup there. I also got the voice here, so if I want, I can have this radio be calling CQ every 30 seconds or whatever, or, or every minute or whatever, because you never know when there's going to be an opening on six or two. Sometimes you just got to make a little bit of noise. Down the bottom is a, a noise bridge. This thing is really good for uh, cutting out um, static from plasma TVs, some, some types of man-made generated type interference. What it does is it lets you connect one antenna, your main antenna up on one side, and then your other uh, sensing antenna on the other side, and you can phase them out. Um, so it doesn't necessarily have to go through your coax line either, uh, like you think, like uh, in line through your, uh, your like a patch cord. I actually have it go through uh, using um, RCA cables, so it, it's b between my radio and the uh, transmit receive relay of the rig. So there's no clicking involved here when I when I set that up. Um, in the manual of the radios, you'll see if you can do that on yours. Here's my uh, my my uh, CW key. Um, I don't know if you you do CW or not, but uh, I had to learn it for my license, and uh, I really enjoyed it. I, I I find that I actually really like CW. 
Um, here's my, my beam. Uh, I have a three element beam. And, uh, you know, yeah, you don't need a beam, but it sure is really nice to have one. And they're really not all that expensive, especially if you look around on Craigslist or whatever and you want to take one down. Um, a really, really good setup. Um, you want to have all your equipment grounded to a central point. I'll put this light on here. Have all your, your equipment grounded to a central point, and that's what I did here. But I got a big plate so that I can not only ground all my equipment to this plate, I also mounted my switch boxes to it. Some of these switch boxes have uh, surge protectors in them, but of course I also protect it at the base of the tower. That's, uh, that's a given right there. Um, later you want to get an amplifier. Uh, this is an Ameritron AL80B. It's great for contesting or trying to bust through a pileup. Um, also, if you're talking to somebody and signals start to fade, it's nice to be able to turn the power up a little bit and prolong the conversation a little bit more. Make it a little bit easier listening for the other party. So, uh, there's my 35 amp power supply. I got two of them. And uh, by the way, this is my lighting setup. I just did this recently. My cats used to like to sit on top of the radios. So I, uh, I put a riser over them and then I put lights underneath the riser. And what's cool about this is you know, I can see the front of the radios without having, to, and also down on the table, without lighting the uh, the whole ham shack up. Um, also, uh, you know, there's my uh, my Cantronics, my TNC. I can run some digital modes, Packet, Amtor. Some of the digital modes I can run natively through the radio or through my logging program here, which I run as uh, Ham Radio Deluxe. Um, so this is my logging program. I can also uh, control the radio. Here's my um, 7600 that we're at right now. Here's the 9100, 144200. And you know, I can I can just drag this bar. You'll see on the radio if I drag the bar, you can see the radio change in frequency. So uh, these little buttons down here are like presets. So I can just click them, and they just they're like little memories, you know, and it just takes me right to where I where I want to go. So it's kind of a neat setup. Um, oh, and uh, my lights. If you do do the lights, get get this. This is kind of cool. You can change the colors, and uh, I kind of I kind of like the, uh, running red at night. It uh, it's a little bit easier on your eyes, um, but. Um, so anyway, this is uh, what works for me, and uh, I think uh, I think as you um, play around, you'll find what works out best for you. But uh, I really like the D uh, of everything here. The I think that little DSP is is great, and if you get a lot of static, uh, the uh, the noise bridge is really good. Um, and uh, remember, a lot of these places. Uh, you know, if you can, you can try something, and if you don't like it, yeah, there's a restocking fee, but it's really, it's really worth uh, trying.